Hey folks, welcome back to War Thunder. Um, so I just put in this quick video together because I've been asked a few times by people who watch my videos how I actually fly in sim and what my control setups are. So for those who don't know, I'm on PS4. Um, I actually use a combination of mouse, keyboard, joystick and throttle controls. Um, I have the Hotas T-Flight 4 or maybe maybe X, I can't remember, it's the one that's actually marketed for the PS4. Um, comes with a free P38 bundle, well I'll say free, but yeah you get a premium aircraft with it. So it's actually sold and marketed like with Gaijin's authority if you like and it comes with some War Thunder shit. So anyway, um, obviously the joystick flying the plane that's pretty straightforward. You twist the stick for rudder, um, throttle does the throttle obviously, and then there's an assortment of buttons all over the stick and the throttle. So the way I've got it set up is this one for the machine guns is the index finger trigger on the front of the stick. Uh, this one is for cannons, it's the thumb button on the back, and additional guns is the other button on the back. So you've got two thumb buttons. Um, most of these things you can assign to whatever you want. Um, this thing is the button that's next to left shift. The one that's like uh, backslash and that line thing. Space is space obviously. I don't have a button set for bomb drop series. Okay so rockets. Um, 4 is default on the keyboard but I also have a multi bind so um, for me I, f I use the second thumb button on the back of the stick and the first um, machine gun trigger. So on planes that have machine guns I'll press the thumb button first and then the trigger and for ones that have cannons I can do it whatever way around I want unless they also have machine guns as well. Um, I have rocket salvo set to the same thing but for some reason it doesn't work. Um, I'm not sure why this isn't set. I'll, I use the same for rockets and ground missiles because I haven't encountered a plane yet that can carry both of them at the same time. Um, fire out to air missiles. I use the um, <coughs> the second thumb button trigger again. So the same as additional guns. And to lock, I press the machine gun trigger because right now all the planes that have missiles, lock on missiles, don't have machine guns. So it makes sense to use that trigger to lock and then the other one to shoot. You'll notice in my videos that whenever I'm locking someone up at the bottom it'll say no small caliber guns on this aircraft. And that's because the bindings are the same. Um, and then this is for aiming the bullpups. So I've kept relative control off but I've lowered the multiplier to like 0.44. This basically limits your input. If it were here then that's how, it, that's how it normally is at like 1.0 um, and that means that it does its, the, the maximum input that it can is what it will do every time instantly but if you lower it to about there it makes it a much lower, a, a slight, a more gradual movement so it makes them a lot easier to aim um, and to fire them because all these buttons look a bit, com a bit confusing um, I've had an enable axis button which again is the machine gun trigger so whenever I'm firing these bullpups to fire them because they're the same as rockets you have to hold the trigger in and then hit the additional fire button which is the second thumb trigger and then I have to hold the machine gun trigger in and I actually use the hat switch on my joystick which is like a little thumb joystick um, to, to actually guide them in Uh, mouse wheel I have set to zoom. I actually have view on the mouse. Um, if you've got head tracking on PC then obviously this won't be needed but um, where is it now? It's somewhere, it's somewhere in one of these. Oh here we go yeah. Um, so mouse look activation. So to look around, I actually click 
um, left mouse because obviously I'm holding the mouse in my left hand so I click left mouse and hold it and that lets me look around with the mouse it takes you a while to get used to looking around using your left hand with the mouse because it's not at all a natural thing to do if you aren't left handed anyway um, <clears throat> and then for head movement uh, which I think is down here I have I don't have forwards and backwards assigned because honestly I don't think it's that useful and it just is, there's not enough buttons really without it being really awkward but for up and down I have um, I don't know why commas there you can ignore comma um, and I'm not sure what that is either. Tap the touchpad, I think, means just left click because it's um, it's the touchpad on the PlayStation 4 controller, and that's basically a mouse. But um, the way that I have it is that I'll hold um, right mouse. Yeah, I'll hold right mouse, and then I'll use the hat switch on the joystick, and that'll move my pilot's head up, down, left, and right. And then to reset it, the joystick actually has like a a secondary index trigger, index finger trigger, the slightly high right of the the main machine gun trigger, and I'll press that and it'll reset my camera view to, to forwards. Uh, what else is there to go over? Trim. Um, so basically, if I hold the stick in a certain position to make my plane fly in a straight line and then hit U, it will lock that control setting in. So I can just let go of the stick and it'll carry on doing what I want it to do. Um, and then Y is to reset, so that just cancels all trim. And then I have W A W A S D blah 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 um, set for elevator and aerial on trim. You just tap them once. If you go into edit axis, you want to put a, a relative control on and put the relative step to 1% and that will allow you to tap it once and add 1% of trim. Otherwise it can be really tricky to be precise with it. Um, rudder is the same except for Q and E. With I've got Z as the cancellation, C as the cancellation for aerolon, and X as the cancellation for elevator. But honestly, generally, I'll just reset um, and do it all. Just start again from the beginning because I never mess with trim when I'm in the middle of a battle anyway. So you know, just keep it simple. Um, I never actually use any of these. Um, so I couldn't tell you what the hell they are because I must have set them up like literally once and then never, I must have been like what's the point, fuck it, and just ignored it so this is all up to you to sort out manual engine control I don't think it's actually really necessary um, and I think that's it so we've got a view on the mouse with the two mouse buttons as the activation for looking around and moving my head, which I do with the hat switch, so I can actually move my head around and look around at the same time because I just hold both mouse buttons down, move the mouse to look around and use the hat switch on the joystick to move my head up, down, left and right to see around uh, support struts in the cockpit and whatnot. Um, I guess I should go over flaps and all that sort of shit. Um, so I've got flaps up and down are set on the squared bracket keys to the left of the enter button on my keyboard. So I can toggle through combat, takeoff and landing flaps. On the throttle, um, I, I have flaps down mapped to a different button. So on my throttle there are two buttons on the front of it and four on the back of it. On one of the ones on the back, I've got, um, well, on the back, I've got a landing gear, which is obviously is just a toggle up and down. As you'll see here, it's triangle, apparently. Because um, obviously this is a PS4 joystick, remember, so the, uh, the joystick buttons have all got PlayStation button names. But I also have it bound on the keyboard, so a lot of these things have, have, have got a keyboard press and a throttle press because it depends what I've got my hands on and what I'm doing at the time. Um, I've got brakes bound to air brake which is on the throttle and it's also on 
the keyboard but I also have left and right brakes mapped independently to C and B. Um, air brake is on the throttle and on the keyboard. Um, flaps up is only on the keyboard because I can just toggle them up on the throttle if I need to by pressing the uh, this one, the X button. All I can really say um, if you're trying to set up a joystick is understand the fundamentals of how this all works and know that you can save control configs. This is probably going to look different for you on PC, but on console you can just type and type whatever you want in here, give it a name and save it and then if you fuck anything up you can just load it and start again and you don't have to worry about never being able to get your controls back. And then you can just adjust as necessary because some planes are way harder to fly than others. Um, so you'll see I've got a Spitfire set up. Uh, that's for most things. And then I've got this one for the F100 and planes that are particularly like wobbly. Um, so to help you understand the difference, for me anyway, it almost entirely comes down to this. Generally, I think non-linearity will be at maybe one or two, but the higher it is, the slower your input, if you like. Non-linearity is basically the virtual length of the joystick. Um, if you imagine sitting in a natural plane and you've got your, the joystick between your legs and it goes literally from the floor to your wrist, so it's like maybe two feet long. Obviously an actual joystick's maybe like half a foot long to three quarters of a foot max. So where the top of that is, if you twist it a little bit, it's going to put in way more input than if you moved a much longer joystick a little bit because the pivot point is closer to, to where your hand is, if that makes any sense. So non-linearity is essentially adjusting the length, the virtual length of the joystick. So the higher it is, the longer you're making your joystick, but in real life it's still only pretty small. So if you were to have it on, um, well, max, then it'd be like pretending that the joystick was super huge. So you'd have to move the stick quite a long way to get it to do anything. And if it's on really low, then you'll literally be able to tap it a little bit and do a fucking loop loop. So you want it somewhere for for my regular non twitchy planes I have it on two point two. But for the twitchier ones I have it on two point five yeah, two point five. Two point five. Um the multiplier is basically um if it's less than one, then it's limiting the maximum possible input that you can put in the stick. So if it's on one and you pull back the stick the whole way, then the plane will pull the stick back the whole way. But I've lowered it to 0 0.94 because A, it's way too finicky to get it on 0 0.95, which is what I actually want it on. So uh, don't think anything of it being 4 and that being weird. It's just because I can't, the mouse isn't precise enough for me to, I, I just can't do it. But basically it means that the last 5% of input I can't access. It cuts it off so I can't use it. Um, and the reason I've done that is because in a lot of props if you pull back on the stick the whole way then you'll get a wing stall and go into a flat spin so limiting it to 95 or 94 or whatever just makes that slightly more difficult to do correction I've ignored forever I really don't see a point in this existing it's basically just this but it does the opposite like this either limits or adds stuff to it and this either limits or adds stuff to it you know, it's just the same thing but backwards it's pointless um, these you don't have to worry about max and min because if you do auto detect and you've got a joystick plugged in then, then it'll just set it to that so don't worry about it um, and then dead zone for the super twitchy shit I've actually put it on 0 0.01 normally I'll have it on nothing and lastly the sensitivity sliders I have on zero 
these are basically like a mouse acceleration but for a joystick so if you have it on absolutely none then what you input will immediately get put into the game there's no delay of any kind if I were to put it on max and I pull back on the stick the entire way then it'll take a while for the game to actually apply full stick it's kind of like how um, <clears throat> if you've ever driven a wheeled vehicle in Orthunder, Thunder then you'll know that they sort of zigzag around everywhere it's very difficult to get them to drive in a straight line well having it on full gives you that kind of effect but in planes because it's just it zigzags your input because of how much like delay there is so if you have it on nothing it's just a lot more precise <coughs> sorry I'm really not very well right now um, this this is for joysticks that have force feedback which I don't think any in the whole existence do so you can have it on set on whatever the hell you want and uh, that that officially is everything I think so um, let me know if you want to know anything more specific and uh, I'll go over it again but uh, there you go now you know thanks for watching cheers and I'll see you in the next one